And today on Making Connections, I have a special guest, a new airport manager, Jeremy Sickler. So I'm going to turn it over and have Jeremy introduce himself. Thanks, Tom, and thanks for the opportunity to be here. Um, as you said, my name is Jeremy Sickler. I grew up in, born and raised in central Wisconsin. I was born in Shawano and was raised in Wittenberg, Wisconsin. My family and most of my friends that I still keep in contact with are all still in the, in the area. I've got a brother in Plover, a really close friend in Mosinee, parents, grandparents, and aunt and uncle still in Wittenberg. So uh, part of the reason that I was interested in getting back to this area was family related, so. All right, well, let's talk about your aviation experience and we'll lead up to what it is present day right now. Okay. Uh, let's talk about how you started uh, with enjoying airplanes. Okay, well, um, I guess I would say, un, you know, much like many kids, I was just fascinated with aviation and things that flew when I was a kid, but never really considered it or thought of it as much of a career opportunity. You know, I wasn't born into or raised in an environment where aviation was a career path, so. Um, it really became more of a reality when this friend of mine that I spoke of in Mosinee, he uh, came from a family of aviators and he was flying uh, corporate at the time and his dad was flying charter at the time and he you know, introduced me to the reality of that becoming an avi you know, aviation as a career. So um, as a result, I was living in La Crosse at the time. I had recently graduated from UW La Crosse and was working for the Menards Corporation in La Crosse and right across the river in Winona, Minnesota, I started taking uh, my private pilot flight lessons, getting my private certificate and with the expectation hopefully of being a professional pilot. And one thing led to another, that friend of mine, the company that he worked for, I ended up working for that company at Mosinee Central Wisconsin Airport for a short stint there while his company had the, the FBO business there. I was a, a line services uh, provider and unfortunately it wasn't long into that uh, career opportunity that the company started to fall apart a little bit and I was let go after a short amount of time in the aviation industry. So I was left with very little experience, you know, like I said, less than six months, no formal education in aviation and limited flight experience. I had just recently attained my, my um, private pilot certificate. So after thinking long and hard about what options I had, considering military, graduate school, uh, various other aviation options, um, professional piloting wasn't an option because I didn't have the experience necessary to compete with others that were looking for jobs at the time. So. Um, per the recommendation of a couple of close family friends, one in particular said, you know, if you're going to do this, do it right. Go back and get your education. Go to the best school you can get into. Uh, find the best option you can, you can find and, and make it happen. So I went through the, or the application process at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, which is wow commonly known as one of the better aeronautical universities, not just in the United States, but worldwide. So um, got in there and, and uh, attained a master's degree in airport management from Embry-Riddle. So uh, graduation from there, I my first job out of school was uh, I worked for two years for an airport consulting company in Denver. Um, and to be honest with you, I was homesick. The time in Daytona Beach and the time in Denver, I missed being home. I missed being around family. So for, when in Denver, I heard of a job opening in Burnett County, Wisconsin, which is in the northwest corner of the state, um, between Eau Claire and Superior. Uh, it's a, uh, quite, a, quite a distance from here, but uh, that's where I worked for eight years prior to the job that I took here uh, just in January. All righty. Do you get a chance to get out on an out in the airplane? Do you get to fly a little bit with this new job at all? So far here, I haven't. Um, what I had established in Siren was a group of friends at the airport who were, a couple of which allowed me to fly their planes. And I will have to admit, all they asked for was replacement of the fuel that was in the plane, which is in the overall ownership cost of a plane, it's very inexpensive. You know, the, the fuel is a drop in the bucket, literally, compared to all the other ownership expenses. So I got to fly relatively inexpensively up there in small Cessnas, a 150 and a 172 that that some of the, the, the people there up there own. So um, 
So here, unfortunately, I haven't established that relationship yet. Uh, and there are, I know, guys out there that have aircraft that I could rent, and I've considered doing that. Um, just hasn't been, mm -hmm. time and money-wise so far, haven't really uh, offered that opportunity. Let's talk about your role as the airport manager. It's changed uh, what it was a year ago with Howard. Um, talk about your role uh, in this new position that was created. You're a city employee through a commission, I believe. Let's just talk about that part and what you need, what you do, on even a daily basis. Okay. Well, as you you hit on Howard's. You know, Howard's position as airport manager and my position as airport manager are significantly different just in the management model that the commission has has uh, moved into w by hiring me as opposed to hiring another contract manager such as Howard. But ultimately a lot of the day-to-day -day operational stuff that Howard did are still things that I'm going to be expected to do. Um, Howard personally got into the snow plowing the equipment when snow came down as, as the airport manager. Um, now the, the plowing of snow is contracted out to a contractor and Howard happens to work for that contractor which is great because Howard obviously knows his way around and that contractor's worked at the airport for a long time as well so um, but it, you know just being there to to meet and greet aircraft, help them with their fuel, move them if they need to be moved, um, you know, shoveling, cutting the grass, making sure that the, the terminal is presentable, making a good first impression on people when they come in. The day-to-day -day operational stuff, as I said, are very similar to what Howard was doing. Um, the, the differences are that my position implies more active involvement in the development of the airport both uh, from an infrastructure perspective, economic perspective, and, and uh, you know, just uh, in general, uh, more, more so than I don't believe Howard, as far as I know, was involved so much in the, the development planning for the airport, the economic planning for the airport overall. You know, Howard was a business owner as well as the airport manager there, so his, his role was a little bit different in that perspective. Alrighty. Uh, airport open 24 hours a day. I know you're not going to be there 24 hours a day. Technically, yeah. You could a person could land in the middle of the night and get fuel. They could, if they knew the codes to get into the air into the terminal building, which are codes that pilots would know their frequencies and various various other codes that pilots would know to get into and out of the terminal building. So yeah, with or without me there, it's technically on, open 24/7. Now, of course, if people need or want after hour um, assistance, you know, before or after hour weekend assistance, when I wouldn't tip, typically be scheduled to be there, I certainly make those accommodations. So okay, so they would just call the airport and probably let you know that they're coming in. Yeah, absolutely. If somebody was knowing that they were going to get there at ten o'clock on a Friday night and they knew they would need some assistance, be it recommendations of how and where to get local lodging or mm -hmm. transportation, some, something to eat, or if they just knew they were going to want help with their fuel, or they came to a new place and didn't want to be the only ones there, yeah, they would just give me a call and I would be there to, to meet and greet and you know offer whatever services mm -hmm. I could for them. Um, have you had a chance to meet anybody uh, special that's come in the airport yet since you've been there? Any any big names yet, or do you, is that going to happen, you think, down the road? Uh, the. The, the one that sticks out just because it was a couple days ago, Governor Walker flew in for, I'm not exactly what he was here for, it's my understanding that the mayor met with him and they signed something. Um, okay. But So that's kind of neat, you yeah. kind of see his entourage. Um, now with the new golf course that's uh, coming up in Rome, mm -hmm. do you see maybe some celebrities coming into our airport down the road maybe? I I guess I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's impossible. My understanding is that they have a, a group of investors those investors, I, I couldn't, I don't even, couldn't even imagine who those investors might be. Local investors, national, international investors. Very likely that those investors could be noteworthy people or celebrities or people of various levels of fame. I would, I would think it's not unreasonable. Well, today I have Jeremy Sickler in the uh, studio, and we're talking about aviation at the airport. He's the new airport manager right here in the city of Wisconsin Rapids. So, Jeremy, let's talk about a few other things. Let's talk about the airport itself. 
uh, has one landing, two landings, three landings, and what kind of aircraft can land there? Well, I always <laughs> I always say this kind of jokingly because you can land any aircraft at almost any airport. Um, you could feasibly get even the biggest jumbo jets on the ground at, at Wisconsin or at uh, Alexander Field, but you would never get them out of there because of weight weight characteristics and takeoff uh, distances and stuff like that. The, the runway, uh, the size of the runway that we have out here, most of the larger privately owned jets would, would operate in and out of here very easily. Um, the, the larger private jets and the smaller regional jets would probably, you know, weight wise, they might have to change their fuel load a little bit to get out safely. But for the most part, uh, the, the whole category of private jets would, would get in and out of here relatively easily. So. so you probably see more prop planes rather than a jet here at this airport? Yeah, so far. I'm, uh, and that's common at what you know these less active general aviation airports. Now I will say compared to where I was before, the aircraft size, you know, the itinerant aircraft size is on average a little bit bigger just I think because there's more economic activity in this area than there is in, in Burnett County where I came from. So, um, you know, people flying into attend business meetings and things of that nature in this area that we didn't have as much of up in Siren. So you may get how many flights on a day or is it kind of sporadic? It's it's really hard to say. A day like today when it's kind of rainy and dreary outside, it's unlikely that anybody will come in. You know, unless um, it's the right type of aircraft and the right type of pilots and the passengers absolutely have to be here, they could get in here on a day like today. But the recreational pilots don't want to fly on a day like today. They want a nice, calm, clear day where they can see forever and and don't have to uh, battle too bad of uh, wind yeah atmospheric rain. conditions yeah, whatever no. now it, uh, you have a weather station there for people to see what's going on for any kind of thing like like that um, yes there's what's called a ASOS an automated surface observation system which basically there's it, it's an array of, of uh, weather equipment out there that gathers information, puts it together into a computer program, then that computer program compiles a message that's sent out via a frequency and the uh, inbound or outbound pilots can tune their aircraft radios into that frequency and get quite up-to-date weather, maybe 15 to 30 second delays. So um, yes, uh, weather is available and automated weather and then in the terminal itself we have a weather computer where it will give you the national picture of, of weather. So if somebody's in there knows they need to fly out west or fly somewhere out down south, they can check the weather en route between here and their destination. And so yeah, there's weather service, all the pilot weather services necessary are available. Okay. Let's look into the future and then afterwards we'll look into the past. What do you see in the next two to maybe five years as you've taken over here just a few months now. What are some of your goals that you want to do for the airport? Well, one goal that I think any airport or any airport manager has is continuing to develop a positive uh, outlook or a positive. You, know, you want the public to look at the airport positively. You don't, you know negative dissent, you know, dissension toward the airport. So one of my goals is to, over time, establish public opportunities to come to the airport for events, um, inviting the public to the airport that wouldn't typically have a reason to go to the airport, It'd be it kids' events or um, fly-ins or you know aviation-related events that would invite people to come to the airport so people become familiar with what's there even though they don't have a plane there, they don't know anybody who flies in and out of there, but so they have a reason to come out there, bring their kids, look around the airport, see what we have to offer. One of the goals, you know, just public relations, um, financial goals to make the airport as sustainable, self-sustainable as possible, and self-sustainability for a small general aviation airport is by and large almost impossible because revenues <laughs> very rarely exceed expenses for an airport like this. So there are tax levy dollars that are you know, implicitly su supporting almost any small uh, inactive GA airport. But um, um, 
and then development wise I mean there, some of those things were already in place before I got here I mean there's some development projects that have been in process for a while you know planning and, and uh, some discussions have taken place carrying through those those uh, development projects and those are like you said those are some are near term to address current situations or near you know near term uh, circumstances and some are long term just to make sure we're poised to address you know long term goals so so things like state funding, um, you get, there's grants out there. Uh, is that something that you'd be involved with that has to maybe write a grant uh, to get some money if you want to do something different? Um, is, like you say, the airport isn't making a lot of revenue. The fuel, you're not going to make much on fuel. is kind of like a gas station to make a certain amount of cents per, do, per gallon. Uh, I guess, is, are you involved in trying to look at, trying to get funding then on projects? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's, um, again, one of the differences or one of the things that I, I believe I was brought on board to, to participate in and probably carry the torch uh, f you know, from here forth is as um, a local desire for or a local need is identified for future development projects at the airport, there is a, a, f yeah, a grant funding process that we go through with the State Bureau of Aeronautics and that process gets us qualified for the state funding and the federal funding which pay the, the vast majority of, of, the, of the cost of a development project. Um, right now a federally eligible project is funded 90% by federal and state dollar, 90% federal dollars, 5% state dollars and 5% local dollars. So yes, the grant money, the funding for, for bigger development projects um, part of my job will be indeed to um, to uh, carry, you know, make sure that that funding is available when the projects are needed. So, all right. Well, let's step back in time. Uh, in the past, uh, Alexander Airport is the official name. Is that right? Alexander uh, Field. Uh, Alexander Southwood Field. Southwood County Airport. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, a lot. It's a long name. It is indeed. Um, and I've been in there before, and uh, we were on the phone earlier this week or week before talking about the displays and some of the history. Uh, is that something uh, you're going to kind of bring out maybe for people when they visit, or is it there now, or I guess additions to that? There's a lot of history here in this airport. I don't even know, maybe you know when it started. Oh, the 20s, I believe. Okay. Um, and again, unfortunately, right. I've only been here a couple months. I haven't mm -hmm. had the time to uh, really research it, but luckily there are several individuals at the airport. I just happened to have lunch with one of them today that, uh, you know, sometimes you just kick back and cross your legs and listen to him talk because they, he's flown in and out of this airport for various reasons for 50 years, you know, since you know, he remembers the old days of the old airline that was here and even before that working, you know, he was out here as a kid when the Alexanders were actually still flying their plane here. So absolutely, that was one of the things. It was never explicitly told to me that I needed to develop or to uh, advertise the history of the airport, but I think um, that certainly is a, a story that should be told. And if it's merely told be, via displays at the airport so that inbound um, passengers can just take a look at some of the history for something to glance at. Um, my understanding is that there's a few local historians that are very uh, attuned to the history of the airport and if given the opportunity I would certainly like to interview and or compile some of the information that they have. Um, just I think it would be a shame for that history to disappear without putting some sort of a history of the airport together and uh, as I said not necessarily told that I was expected to do something of that sort. It's just kind of, I think it'd be interesting to do. I think so, especially when we talk about economic development. If we want some bigger corporations coming here, most likely they're gonna come by plane. And they may come into the airport and they know nothing about the area. Or well, maybe they know something by researching it because they wouldn't be here. But it gives them that, just that added touch, that the feel of Wisconsin Rapids. So, Maybe that you know a little bit of history about about the airport, which it has a great history with the Alexanders. So, yeah, I, I'd be glad to see what it looks like and, yeah, and uh, get some historians for you as well. Great. So, 
month. So, yeah, a lot of neat photos that I have seen, but uh, I guess that all leads up to having things uh, when like pancake breakfasts, they, you've heard of those, and oh, yeah. people have those things. So anything on tap that you know that's coming up between this year or not yet? The only two that I'm aware of that these were, um, if if you're familiar with the, what EAA is, it's the Experimental mm -hmm. Aircraft Association. The mothership is in, in Oshkosh, but there are local chapters of it at several, you know, many airports, and there's 17, 1800 different local chapters nationwide. The one that's based here, is a very active EAA chapter. They, so far this year, are planning on putting on two what they call flying hamburger socials. I don't know if you've heard about that. It's on Wednesday, two different Wednesdays this year. I know one is in June, and one right now we're scheduled for July 6th, which is two days after the 4th, which is kind of inconvenient to some extent, but maybe good to some extent, um, where the local EAA chapter, and you know, I'll probably be included, will have the fixings for people can fly in and make their own hamburgers, and that's the idea. And it rotates around different airports in the central Wisconsin area every week. So one Wednesday it might be Nielsville, Marshfield, Wausau, Mary, you know, I'm not exactly sure, all of the airports that are involved, Stevens Point, here. Um, so it's a reason for people to get out and fly, um, burn some ab gas on a Wednesday night, socialize with people at other airports, and um, the public is always welcome to things like that. My understanding is at other airports they've had car shows affiliated with them or hot air balloon rides affiliated with them, just reasons to bring the public in as well as, you know, keep try to keep people flying around to the other airports as well. So, yeah, look forward to a couple of those. All right. Um, is, you, said, you mentioned there, is there a club in Wisconsin Rapids, an aviation club? The, the EAA chapter? It's, is that what it's called? Yeah, it's, Locally it, it's, here? it's a local chapter of the EAA uh, okay. organization. So is there any uh, credentials you have to meet to be a part of that club? Or if you're just interested in aviation, do they ever meet at, your, at, at the airport here? They meet every the second Tuesday of every month at 7 o'clock at the terminal building at Alexander Field. Okay. Um, I, I don't believe they have any specified credentials. I mean, I don't believe they expect somebody to be a pilot to be a member. The chapter at the airport that I came from, it could have been anybody who liked flying kites or making paper airplanes could have shown up and become a <laughs> member of their of their uh, their organization up there. It's just basically a, a group of people interested in aviation that want to do things with another people, a group of people with their same interests and uh, the camaraderie and the and yeah. the events. That, so it, I. I think it's a great a great organization, and they're very helpful to me, and they do a lot of good work at the airport. So. Great. Again, when does it happen? On, on a Monday, you said? Their meetings? Yeah, their meetings. Second Tuesday of the month at 7 o'clock at night All at, right. at the terminal building at the airport. All right, great. Let's talk a little bit about um, some of the other things you need to do around the airport. I know we talked about maintenance. There's a beacon light that goes all the time. Is that something that has to be checked upon to make sure it works? Any things that as an aviation that you have to make sure that it is safe? Well, obviously safety <laughs> safety equipment, uh, flight flight safety critical equipment is, is, as long as it's something that I'm comfortable with and knowledgeable about taking care of, yes, absolutely. That's uh, big component of, of my job description. Um, light bulbs are especially air, you know, runway and airfield lighting that is obviously a big part of that. So the beacon itself is as you've mentioned a tall thing that spins and the light the light spins much like a, a lighthouse almost. Um, the purpose of it is basically is just to alert uh, nighttime aviators that there's an airport in the area. So believe it or not that that can be seen from dozens of miles when you're at the right altitude um, flying at night. And if you fly in an area like here in central Wisconsin, there happens to be quite a few airports within a relatively narrow, small area. You'll see the, the beacons from two or three or four different airports all at the same time if you're flying at night. So it's, it's a navigational aid, but yes, and then maintenance of that, of course, is part of the part of what I do out there. I mean, I, don't, I might not personally be the one climbing to the top to change the light bulb, but um, if the light bulb goes out, obviously, I have to make sure that it's changed. So, so uh, yeah, as I said, it's flight safety critical e equipment. I know the, the airport is, has uh, flight school. 
Uh, is that part of what you do or is that hired on? Um, the two, well, okay. Howard was a flight school operator as the manager before I got here. He was a contracted manager. Part of his contract was to offer a flight school or you know a service, a flight service at the airport. Um, that's not part of my, I'm, I'm not te technically a contractor. I'm technically a municipal employee and providing that service isn't part of my, my job description. However, Howard continues to offer flight training as a personal business over there and there's another another uh, company, Wings Air Charter, that so there's actually two flight schools out there. So they could call the airport and uh, you could get them in with one of those? They could call me at the okay. airport number or you know Google search would easily get you in the direction of one or the other or both I and mean, they're they're out there they're published and their business cards are on the on the desk at the terminal building at the airport so. okay yeah just in case somebody really wants to get uh, have a pilot pilot's license uh, they could just come out there uh, but the best thing time to reach you at the at the airport daily Monday through Friday yeah my my job description is Monday you know, 40 hours a week Monday through Friday but okay. I it's certainly that's not uh, realistic expectation I mean that like I said, things come up day and night, weekend. I've got to respond to many of them. Um, so I do all I can to be there 8 to 5 or 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. Um, check messages regularly. So um, even if I'm not there, um, hopefully soon we'll have a cell phone number established for the airport as well so that oh. that'll be you know, at, okay. after hours on call type stuff. Well, we only have a few more minutes left. Uh, I just wanted to touch base on communication um, with airplanes. Is that how does that work? Is it? It's not a telephone. Is it? Is it like a uh, like a CB? I, I'm just hmm. curious. Aircraft to aircraft or aircraft to ground. How or? about aircraft to the terminal? Um, that's just two way radio. Okay. Is that something that you can monitor from anywhere if needed? If you have a if you have a receiver that has the the aviation band frequencies, absolutely. Yep. Okay. So there's a band just like any other kind of Yeah, there's a, there's a band of, of frequencies that are, that are made for, uh, but um, yeah, they're, you can buy aviation radios at Radio Shack. So there's probably some people that like to listen to that. I, I absolutely. Yeah, so there's, a, there's something about it just like a scanner, police scanner. Uh, yep. Listen to the aviation yep. and uh, you could tune that in right now. And, and if there was, yeah, if there was air chatter in the air, you'd be able to pick it up and listen to who's landing where. And okay. um, yeah, so it's, I, I would get calls once in a while. Somebody might call me, no idea who they were. This is in my previous life, and just say, "Hey, I heard you just had a citation land there." Yeah, well, yeah, my radio at home just went off. I heard they came in from Phoenix, right? Or something like. That. Wow. So. So well, you you can basically you're going to see a lot of smaller airplanes, so uh, the Cessna type. Uh, yeah. Any, yep. Is there any unique planes out there, any like biplanes or anything like that? Nothing that I've seen so far. Okay. Given that there's, you know, fifty some aircraft base here, I may have only seen a quarter of them. So it wouldn't surprise me if tucked away in one of these hangars somewhere isn't something unique and special. But I just haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Well, the warmer weather will bring it out, right? I hope so. All right. Anything else that you want to mention out to the public? Uh, uh, and, and since we only have about a minute left, and uh, oh. glad you're here. Yeah, well, thank you. I'm glad you didn't, uh, if, I'm, if I can say one last thing, just sure. don't be afraid to stop by the airport and shake my hand. If you see a plane taking off or landing that you're interested in, you know, stop by, ask questions. Pilots love to talk about their planes. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it, and welcome to the area. Thank you. And back to Wisconsin. Well, you were in Wisconsin, but a little bit closer like, to it, home. It felt like Canada yeah. up there. <laughs> <laughs> Wittenberg is not too bad. A pretty quick ride here. Right. 20, 30, 40 minutes. So, but again, thanks again. Yeah.